when we're doing our family history research, we're looking for names, dates, places, and relationships. But we need to start thinking outside of that basic information and see what else, what other bits of information were important for our ancestors. Maybe we, we're looking at their careers or their land ownership or things that they may have written, images and photographs that, of them or that they may have taken, whether or not they travel, what accomplishments they may have had during, during their lifetime, and even things like voting. All of these leave a certain trail behind for those individuals, and you may not find, necessarily find those in the larger genealogy research uh, databases. So where are we going to look for some of these interesting stories? Another website that you've probably heard about is eBay. You may already be use, utilizing eBay for your family history research, but you can set up notices on eBay with a surname or a location as your search term. And if something comes up that somebody has for auction that matches that reference, it will email you and let you know that there's an item there for sale. I find it really great because you can find photographs, family Bibles, other artifacts on eBay. You don't necessarily have to buy the things. You can actually you know, clip out some of the pictures and some of the information that might be helpful for you. So for example, on the right-hand side, it's the page from a Bible. And this is just a, a marriage uh, record that was in a Bible. And it has the names of the individuals, the dates and the location. So, you know, really great piece of information. And if you see somebody that has this for sale and may or may not want to buy the actual book, you can at least take an copy an image from that book so you have it for your own records. Many times you'll find collections of photographs. I find collections of photographs at various locations, antique stores, thrift stores, street markets, things of that sort, garage sales. And, you know, I try to see if there's identifying information on those photographs, and then I'll upload them. I, I'll buy some photographs. I'll upload them to um, Family Search in the Memories section. You know, put a notice there. If anybody is related to these people, contact me, and I will send you the photographs. And so I, you know, I have a pile of photographs sitting on my desk, and, and I'm waiting for people to claim them. And then over on the left-hand side, as I mentioned, my family is the Westerheide family. This is the Westerheide family from St. Louis, Missouri. My Westerheide family is in Ohio, but they're, they're, these are cousins, and they ran a cigar factory. And so here's an example of a box of Westerheide cigars that was available. I was able to purchase Westerheide uh, cigar cutters. And so I got a few of those and I gave those out to family members a couple of years ago. The little metal token that's on the bottom, it says Larmy H.G. Bakery. H.G. Bakery is Henry Geyer. And Henry Geyer ran the bakery and the town was Fort Larmy, Ohio. And so these are tokens that the people in the community would utilize to buy bread with. So he had tokens that they would they would buy in advance and then they would uh, hand those tokens in for the baked goods in his bakery. And sometimes you get really great items from antique and vintage stores. Many of these stores have websites and you can find an antique store maybe in a near a community where your family lived and you might be able to find some items within those antique stores. But sometimes you'll find items in completely different parts of the country. So here's an example. This is a picture of Sarah Poland Walters. She was born 1816 and died in 1896, and she lived in, the, lived in Plains, Georgia. So we joke about it, but the Walters family and the Carter family, you know, uh, Jimmy Carter, were neighbors. So Sarah Poland Walters and Jimmy Carter's great-grandmother probably knew each other. This picture here was found in a secondhand store in Seattle, Washington. How the painting got from Plains, Georgia to Seattle, Washington, I have no idea. But you can see it's a very ornate, fra ornately framed painting. And this is my wife's fourth great grandmother. At the bottom of the picture, it has her name, it has her maiden name, it has her birth and death dates, and it has her husband's name also. So added to the information, you know, indicating to us that this is the right person that we're looking for. So we found this online. We contacted the secondhand store in Seattle and 
bought it from them. They shipped it to us here in Florida. And when we opened up the package and looked at the back, it had the family genealogy written on the back of the, of the painting. So it had a family tree there with her, her husband, their kids, and some of the grandchildren already lined out. And we could just match them up with the people we already knew about and add any additional information that we, we didn't know at the time. And then there's the Internet Archives Wayback Machine, and this is archive.org. And this website is really interesting because have you ever clicked on a link and, you know, that website that you clicked on no longer exists? Well, you can take that link and bring it into the Wayback Machine and you can post that link and it'll tell you it will have gone out and looked at that web page several times in the past before the web page disappeared. And you can click on any of those dates and see what that page looked like on those dates. So for example, this bar graph at the bottom of the search is for Google. And you can see that Google first became a website in late 1998. And there are images of what the Google website looked like for every one of those dates since then. And I, I stopped this at 2018. But if you have another web page that you know, do, doesn't exist anymore, you can put that address in there. And maybe the Wayback Machine took four or five images of that web page. Historically, you can go in and look at those images and see what information was there. It all, also archives text, video, audio, software, and other images. So you can find lots of different publications, pamphlets, yearbooks, a variety of different types of documentation that might be helpful in your research. So you'll want to check this out. It's archive.org, and you can search in the websites or the text or the images or whatever you want to look for to see if you can find some information that might be relevant to your research. Many times, local and national archives or records offices might have websites that are available online. And so this one here is a record found in the Public Records Office for Victoria, Australia. And it's the coroner's inquisition for George Frederick LaBeouf from 29 December 1862. And so this is an interesting piece because my wife's family is descended from the LaBeouf family. And the LaBeoufs lived in Jersey, which is in the Channel Islands between your, uh, England and France. And several of them went to Australia and lived there. So we lost track of them after they moved to Australia in the research. And so this is just one record here that helps us place some of these individuals. And then many states have what are called state memory projects. So this is an example of the Florida Memory Project. And many times you can just go to Google and type the name of the state and put memory project and you know, it might pop up as one of the first sets of hits for your search. And the Florida Memory Project has a lot of really great information. And so I did a couple of researches for the Drake family and see what comes up. And so you see the first one is the front porch of Mrs. Drake in Yalaha, Florida. And so now we have an idea of what her house looked like. You see the next one is a steam engine for the Drake Lumber Company. Um, so they were a major lumber company in South Florida, near Miami, and the land that they developed as they were removing the lumber, they developed the land for their employees was the town of Princeton. So notice that the town of Princeton, the university, Princeton University, so they named the town after his alma mater. You see the long strip at the bottom. This is from 1913, and this indicates that Mr. Drake from Yalaha, Florida, owned a Cadillac touring sedan. It was 45 horsepower, and the serial number was 52,307. So that's some really interesting information there. And then there's a bit of information that says the return of registered precinct voters. This is the voter roll for that town. And down below there, you can there'll be Drake's name in that information. And what's great about this is it tells you how long they lived in the state, how long they lived in the county, and how long they lived in that precinct. So you can see if they moved around within Florida, within the county, and within that precinct. 
And then the one above that is Andrew Jackson Fairs. And this is his World War I uh, service record. This is you know, very detailed. It tells his age. He was 53 years and six months old. He was a quartermaster first class. He is at, his address was 850 Grape Street in Jacksonville, Florida. And it tells, it tells us his recruiting station, Jacksonville, Florida. But it also tells us he was on the USS Wisso. And it gives the dates. He was on the USS Raposo. And it dates there with the quartermaster first class. He was in the Naval Hospital, Charleston, South Carolina, as machinist mate first class. And then again, the USS Raposo and the USS Atlantic. So we get a lot of information on this one card about his World War I service. We can also find land records. So the Bureau of Land Management has a website called glorecords.blm.gov. And here, if they are in a land grant state, which means the federal government owned the land and it did grants to people settling those areas, you'll be able to find original land grants for these areas. And so this is one of my wife's ancestors. This is James A. Walker. And it gives a very specific detailed assessment of where that land is, how many acres it is. So you can go to the surveys that are associated with that and find exactly where that land was and see what's, what's around that property. Uh, many areas had what are called plat maps, and those plat maps show property ownership. I really like the Historic Map Works website because it gives great maps for the area of, of my interest, which is in Ohio. This is for Jackson Township in Auglaize County, Ohio, but you can see all of the parcels that are there labeled with the number of acres and the ownership. And you have these maps done on a regular basis every so many years. So you can see land ownership change. Maybe they sold part of the property to somebody else. Maybe their children inherited part of the property. So it was divided up. Or maybe you can see the neighbors happen to be somebody that married into the family later on. So, you know, you can track relationships and neighbors and, and other information here, as well as knowing where the churches, the schools and the cemeteries and other important landmarks might be. And then, of course, you've probably gotten familiar with Sanborn fire insurance maps, but this gives you an idea of the types of buildings that were present, whether they were wood frame, uh, masonry, brick, what risk they had for, for fire. And this was used for fire insurance purposes to determine what their policies would be, and also by fire companies to determine where they would be putting out fires based on the building types. You can also find real estate information. Um, and so I like to find out the address from like a census record or another record city directory or something of that sort, and then go into Google Street View and see, is that building still there today? Has it been you know, changed or destroyed or no, it's no longer there? And then you can go into things like Zillow or Trulia, which are real estate databases, and you can find more detailed information. So in this case here, this 169 South Hanover Street in Minster, Ohio, in the 1930 census, my great grandfather was living there. And you can see if you read through this description, it says this house was built in 1926. So if the house was built in 1926, he was living there in 1930, you could probably assume that he was the first owner of that house and learn about the information. It says it's currently two bedrooms, two bathrooms, and about 1,600 square feet. Another house that uh, one of my relatives lived in was 104 South Frankfurt Street in Minster. And you can see this one was built in 1927. It's three bedrooms, two baths, and 2,500 square feet. So, you know, I don't know if I read through the details, it might tell me that there's some renovations or some parts are added to the house, but I can now, you know, see the house and get some information about when it was built. And then you might be able to find business or tax directories. Many of us are probably use, using the uh, city directories already to just find people where they lived, what their occupations might have been. But many areas had business and tax directories. And this gives you more, a little bit more information to build on that the city directories don't. And you can see down here, Henry Westerheide at the bottom of the page was living at 3429 Illinois Avenue. His real estate value was $1,100 and his personal value was 50. 
And I'd have to go back and see what the date on this art directory was, but you know, it looks like most of the people in the area are in that uh, one to three to five, six thousand dollar range. But then you see this West family, Thomas H. West family at 11 Westmoreland Place. And you can see there's several West families that live there, Alan T and Thomas H. And you look at that, and that's 134,000 for the property value. And the one right above it is 35,000 in personal value. So, you know, I wonder what that house looked like compared to the $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 houses listed in the other, other streets. You always can get a little help from your friends. I, I really do encourage people to look at social media when they're doing their research. And it allows you to help crowdsource your research. So things like Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Flickr, you know, you can do searches on those. You can find relatives, you can find photographs, you can find other information. And there are a lot of groups that exist on these social media platforms, especially Facebook, that are specific for locations or topics or research in a, in a specific way. So maybe adoptees or translations of uh, foreign languages. And once you find that right group, you can begin to ask your questions. So how do you find that group? Well, Facebook, you know, you can search all day long and find all sorts of different groups on Facebook, but there's a socialmediagenealogy.com. They have a genealogy on Facebook list. And that list was kept at, uh, up to date until 2021. And when they closed down that list, they had over 430 pages with 16,700 family history genealogy related links to Facebook groups. So imagine that there's, there's over 16,000 Facebook groups that can help you with your genealogy research. Now, when they closed that down in 2021, the page still exists. You can still download that. But Cindy's list took over from that point and started adding to that list. And so the cindyslist.com Facebook page now has the updated list and keeps that going. You're going to find groups here for translations, photo restoration, lost and found, military, adoption, DNA, local experts, and a lot of other different topics. So, you know, take a look at those and find some resources there that you might not have ever heard of before. And then take this all and put it all together. So adding the information you find on the different Google search sites, sites, the uh, archive.org site, the real estate sites, the Facebook sites, and so on, can help you fill in those gaps and build the stories that aren't told with your usual search rec record searches. The census records are every 10 years. The city directories are nice. They give you a little bit of information. But combining all of these components together, it's what's going to fill in those gaps and build those stories for your ancestors.